So now that you've created your own Edpuzzle account, let's take a look at how to build content in here. Along the left hand side, you can easily search for videos by going directly into the app that hosts the kind of videos that you're looking for. So maybe you're looking for a video from YouTube or from Khan Academy, National Geographic, TED Talks, Veritasium, Number File, or Crash Course. Start with the location that makes sense for you. You can easily shop around by just clicking on these icons. I'm going to go into YouTube and I'm going to search YouTube for tech integration which is a topic that I'd like to create a video on. And I know from previous experience that I can actually pre-search this on YouTube and then come find the video in here in Edpuzzle. I'm going to select the video I'm looking for. This one in particular is coming from Edutopia, a reliable source, and the video itself is of good quality and fully captioned. Once I've selected the video, I can go ahead and edit that video to be able to start to cut it or to trim some of the, the space off the video. I can trim it from either end, reducing the total quantity of video time that my students need to watch. I can trim it from either the beginning or the end. Or I can use the black trim to put a cut into the middle of the video if I need one just by adding cut. A cut will separate out certain parts of the video from the rest. Let me just add cut, trim the video again on the other side, and then these will be recombined in my finished product. I can see I have a total new time of three minutes and six seconds compared to the over four minutes when I began. I can proceed on through other features, like adding a voiceover narration, if this helpful. Keep in mind this voiceover narration will not be captioned. And then I can go into adding questions into the video. So to do this, I would start by playing the video and finding the timestamp that I wanted to add a question on. So for example, I would like to add a question right around this point in time in the video. And I'd like that question to be a multiple choice example. So I can click multiple choice and I can start to type in the question that I have for my learners. I'll add in any of the options that I'd like them to choose from. One, two. I can continue to add more selections for them to choose from and I should designate which one is correct or incorrect using the icons along the side. I can also add in feedback that my learners would receive if they chose the correct or incorrect answer. Keep in mind as you're crafting your questions that you can bold, italicize, or underline information, use super and subscripts, add in hyperlinks and images, or even use the insert equation to insert a math equation. Once I have a question crafted for this particular moment on the video, I can hit save. Once that's saved, my video will restart and I can clearly see that there's an annotation now at this moment in the video. It's a multiple choice question and if I needed to edit that multiple choice question, I could go ahead and click the pencil to do so or the trash can to get rid of it. I can choose another location in the video and I can continue to add additional multiple choice questions, open-ended questions, or notes. Open-ended questions would encourage critical thinking or open dialogue. So choose your open-ended questions carefully. Again, once you have your question crafted, you can save that option. Once you've crafted the video according to the annotations that you'd like to see here, you'll hit continue. Once you have your video fully done with all the notes, open-ended and multiple choice questions you might like to run, hit finish on your video. This is the finished product that you could share with your students. So in your course, you might choose to take this link and paste it as a new object in your course for students to click on. Make sure that you're giving due credit to the source for where the video comes from. So my example would cite this as an introductory technology Introduction to Technology Integration from Edutopia, who is the original content creator. Alternatives are to ask your students to create Edpuzzle accounts where you can then assign these onto students. My recommendation is to simply 
Link the video in your course as the easiest way for students to access.